watching KPVM News 46. News 46, local coverage you can count on. And welcome back. A Tonopah man is arrested for domestic battery. Tonopah resident Frank Rodriguez has been arrested for domestic battery by strangulation at a home on El Dorado Street in Tonopah. According to the declaration of arrest, the Nye County Sheriff's Office made contact with an individual who said that her boyfriend had strangled her with a belt to the point that she passed out. The reporting party said that they had went out for drinks earlier in the evening and that Rodriguez and her had got into an altercation. She allegedly told police that Frank told her that if she called the cops, he would kill her. During the altercation, the female admits that both individuals were pushing each other and at one point she had slapped Frank. At that time, she said that he put her head between his legs and she begged him to let go. A scuffle occurred between the male and female in which Frank allegedly slammed her head into the floor at least three times, according to the reporting party. She said at that time, then Frank wrapped a cloth belt around her neck until she passed out. She told police that he was on top of her saying, he was still debating to kill her or not. Police say that the female had a large lump above her right eye and it was black and red. She also had marks on the front and side of her neck and other injuries, including her right shoulder and back, both had red marks on them. Medical was called to check on the female at this time. The male and female have two kids together and both live at the residence. Frank Rodriguez was then arrested and transported to the Tonopah Detention Center. All right, well, here is Jeanette to tell us what's happening in our courts. In this week's court report, now former Nye County Officer Richard Deutsch has been found guilty of the domestic battery charge he was facing connected to a reported fight with his ex-girlfriend, and he now plans to appeal that court decision. Here are details from that bench trial. The defense rested, and after hearing closing arguments, the court found that the state had met its burden of proof on two of the four counts Deutsch was facing and found the defendant guilty as charged on counts one and four, domestic battery and injury to other property less than $25. However, the court found that the state did not find its burden of proof on counts two and three, both for reportedly disturbing the peace on two separate dates, and found the defendant not guilty of those counts. After hearing sentencing recommendations, the court imposed the following. On count one, $340 in fines and fees, two days in jail, and converted the jail time to 48 hours of community service. An additional 48 hours of community service 26 sessions of domestic violence counseling and 90 days suspended jail. And on count four, the court imposed $355 in fines and fees and restitution in an amount to be determined. The court inquired if defense counsel intends to appeal. Then Deutsch's retained attorney, Melissa Berry, answered in the affirmative. So the court stayed fulfillment of sentencing requirements to allow time for the appeal process. Finally, the court set a status restitution hearing for December 19th. Notably, since Deutsch has now been convicted of domestic battery, under Nevada and federal law, he cannot carry a firearm, which now prevents him from fulfilling his job duties as an officer and a member of the military. Arraignment proceedings are scheduled to resume in district court this Friday for the local pair of teen brothers who admitted to gruesomely stabbing and killing their mother at their home. During what was originally set as Dakota Saldivar and Michael Wilson's arraignment hearing, both defendants were present in custody with their respective attorneys. Then discrepancies following the defendant's cases being bound over to the higher court were addressed. The state notes that in justice court, the defendants were heard under one case number, whereas in district court, they have individual numbers. So the court wants the amended information to be filed before their arraignment is heard. As a result, the court continued these matters to October 12th. The defense had no objection, and district court remanded justice court to fix those clerical issues. This has been your court report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 46. Thanks so much, Unette. Well, let's join Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. 
capping our news, Hurricane Watch in Florida. Businesses are shutting down and homes are boarded up. Hurricane Michael's power-packed wind and heavy rain could cause up to $10 billion in damage. In Georgia, a state of emergency is being called in 92 counties. Cotton farmers and oil producers are expected to take a hit. The global economic forecast is being slashed by the IMF as trade tensions rise. The IMF is downgrading economic growth as corporations are reporting slowdowns from rising tariffs. Westmoreland Coal Company is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. According to the company, normal operations should continue and customers will be served as it restructures and deals with debt. Google is out with its new Pixel 3, one of the cool new features, being able to text a message when callers appear on the smartphone screen. That price is around $800. And much more news right after this break.